So here we are back again with the 15 minute Zhang Chuang uh, challenge. And that word, I, when I was doing a little bit of research before this challenge, I saw that uh, word written and pronounced a lot of different ways. But from my Chinese teachers who actually speak Mandarin, it's Zhang Chuang. So we're going to do that today and uh, bump it up to five. And so again, uh, you don't have to do five. If you've been doing three up to this point, then it's probably fairly easy for you to, to go to four at least, stay at four for a week if you wish, and then bump it up to five. And uh, if, if it takes you a week or even two weeks to get to five, no problem, don't, you know, don't push yourself too hard. And by the time you get so that you've been doing five for a while, I will probably have filmed a 10 minute. And for the 10 minute, again, my, my advice is just put a timer on whatever it might be, an egg timer or a cell phone timer or whatever, and work yourself up gradually, a minute a week or two if you feel adventurous. But uh, don't, don't push on too hard. We want to take care of our joints and heal our joints. This, uh, as I mentioned, is really good for people with arthritis. It's going to bring a lot of blood and strength uh, support for your joints if we do it correctly. So in a very calm sort of way, we want to be uh, re-releasing re re ourselves over and over again because you will feel, most people do, they start to tighten up gradually. So you want to sit a little more, drop your elbows more, drop your shoulders more, all, all that kind of thing. And uh, make sure your alignment is good and knees don't have pressure on them. That, that's a big one for a lot of people. The default for a lot of people is to push this forward and, and tighten it or to collapse. So that's going to be bad for your joints. Just uh, keep, uh, keep chanting to yourself, realign, re-release, sink your breath, raise your hand, all that kind of thing. And if, if you want, I mean, this is perfectly acceptable, look at yourself and touch yourself, perfectly acceptable to do that. And in fact, it's a really good idea until you get used to this and you can do most of it on autopilot. So I'm just going to uh, invoke my timer. I've already got it set for five. And here we go. Five minutes worth of standing. So uh, just some gentle reminders that the hip should be bent your butt should be a little bit tucked under so that if you run your hand down, you really don't want any kind of an indent here. And if you just stand like that, a little release I just did then. My lower back, in fact, right now is rounded outward slightly and flat all the way down. So all, all these kinds of very small adjustments are really, really good for you. So remember, top of the head pulled up, back of the neck pulled up, and chin tucked, and then we want to make a line that comes down the back, down the spine, right into this area. And this area is like a, a reverse to you or an upside down horseshoe. It should be rounded and open that way, and you have to focus a little bit on releasing and being here. If the rump sticks out even slightly, you're not going to have that horseshoe shape. That horseshoe, upside down horseshoe, upside down U, is also here, coming down the spine, down the spine, and it kind of goes into your shoulder blade area. So, a couple of interesting points to look for. <coughs> so, head up and neck up, and chin a little bit tucked. Very big and open through here, with the chest relaxed, not pulled in, and certainly not shoulders up shoulders down as if being pulled down elbows down as if being pulled down hands open and the fingers should point slightly upwards okay weight is on the heels between our knees you can look to see what you look like the feeling should be that there's very very light pressure here not pushing your knees out like that by any means but not allowing for collapse and helping with restructuring of the lower body. Then as well as that wall, we bring one a little bit further up, closer to the groin. So first one is general, uh, general legs and knees, and the second one will help your hips to adjust into the correct position. 
Okay, breathing. The only thing that we want to do right now is not attempt to control it, but just pay attention to it. There's a, a bit of stress on our body because we're sitting and supporting ourselves and our, our arms. They might even be getting a little bit tired being out here, but one way you can last a little bit longer for both of these hips and arms is sink very slightly more and release very slightly more. Now, every once in a while, check your knees, feel for where your weight is, check into your breath, your neck, your head, shoulders very pulled down. And when the shoulders pull down, we would need to open the hip just that much more so that the shoulder actually sits on the hip and the hip sits on the foot. If you find yourself moving very slightly as you're standing, that's just fine, especially when you're at home. If you were doing this in a demonstration or you're doing it to show your teacher, for instance, you would not want to move. But as we're learning how to do this and getting the feel of uniting our body, sinking our body, displaying pump through your body, Hung, for instance, this area is expanding. The arms generally are expanding down here, is expanding. The hips even are getting wider and rounder at the same time. Just generally the idea of bringing hung, not to any particular spot, but out through the entire arm. So if you're touched anywhere, on your arm, or you imagine that the arm is very slightly, someone's going to help you collapse by stretching a little bit more. We should be able to resist at least a light push on. So there's the timer. Again, coming up very, very slowly. Very relaxed. Breath didn't rise, shoulders didn't go up. Everything's very calm. So even five minutes, uh, relatively easy, and uh, five minutes uh, at home, I'm sure everybody's got five minutes somewhere. I know I boil the kettle uh, several times a day and uh, usually use my time well while I'm doing that. So hopefully you can find the time to do these things. These are, uh, uh, Zhang Chuang, as I mentioned before, it's a universal exercise that uh, everybody that's involved in Qigong and Tai Chi does these exercises, and they do them in a variety of ways. Uh, my, actually, my very first legitimate Tai Chi teacher, um, I, I haven't finished the article yet, but I'm planning on including a photo of her and myself. It was uh, Simu Simone Guo, the wife of the, the very famous Gu Lianying. And uh, Gu Lianying, there's, pos there's photos of him in this posture, which is a little bit different than ours, but it's big and expanded. And this is the one that he's very famous for. He taught this uh, for years and years and expounded on the benefits of it. So if uh, such an illuminary as him and Master Leong say it's good for you, uh, I'll, I'll try and include some links where you can go look at what Western science has to say as well as Eastern science. Anyways, that's it uh, for today, the five minute challenge, which means that we're one third of the way to the 15 minute challenge. And I hope you all get there. Best of luck to everyone. And uh, see you next time.